Ooh. Now, I am really happy that Samsung continues to push forward the foldable because we are desperate for these new looks and new takes. If you spend any amount of time in like, like this experience of having all this real estate oh that's because this is one of the one of the true under display situations wow oh it's called cream it does actually look kind of appetizing almost so i like the modern look to it on the back modern shapes we got all the new stuff yes exciting day it is the z flip 3 5g and the z fold 3 5g it is not just these retail units in front of me, my goodness, I got everything. It's all the colors. It's like, look at this uh, greenish tone and the lavender thing that got Kurt quite excited. Even with the big one, as far as the big one's concerned, like we got this color, what is this? It's uh, some type of phantom silver because Willie Doo's on deck, just right over there behind the laptop. He just finished eating a sandwich, which means that he's fired right up. And then we have this one right here, which is uh, apparently some type of green. It's almost black. I like those deep greens. What's this one called? Phantom green. Phantom green. Just stick with the phantom. You'll be all set. It doesn't stop there. We also have the watches. Galaxy Watch 4 Classic and Galaxy Watch 4. The Galaxy Buds 2. The S Pen Pro and and then the S Pen over here, which fits into the case. Now this was rumored, and look, it happened. S Pen input on Z Fold 3. This is what a lot of people wanted, and it is official. So why don't we kick it off with the Z Fold 3 5G? Every so often, there's one that comes across that it'll get you going because it's kind of the reason you got into the business to be excited by new things, new gadgets, new ways of looking at something. And that's where the Fold lives for me because the very first generation came out, this one right over here, and immediately I knew something was up, something was different. Now we're on the third generation. They continue to make improvements to it. IPX8, you have Gorilla Glass Victus on here. The pen input now, Snapdragon 888 is gonna be in there. 12 gigs of RAM is gonna be in there. Flagship status. Inside this box is gonna be Phantom Black. And right away, you know, it's not your typical smartphone. It's already in its folded out state. And this is a huge display to work with. 7.6 inches on the inside. And then of course, that exterior display, 6.2 inches, a slight increase in PPI as well. That's where you're gonna get your Gorilla Glass uh, Victus. Ooh. Now I am really, happy that Samsung continues to push forward the foldable because we are desperate for these new looks and new takes. So it's a very deep black and you, you can see it contrasted against the display over here. Now the camera layout changed a little bit, sort of fits in with the rest of the lineup. So you have 12 megapixels across the board here and then you have some optical zoom in there as well at 2X. Let's go ahead and just do our initial fold here still so very satisfying here you can see the black hinge as well the device got lighter you know it's a relatively large device that's the point of it right it's meant to fold out and be uh, kind of a productivity monster if you need to launch for example a desktop version of a browser no problem 7.6 inches but it meant that when you were using it as a regular phone it was kind of heavy, but they were able to trim that back. 271 grams on the new model, 279 grams. So we're shaving grams. And that's tough to do from an engineering standpoint. There's gonna be a little bit of paperwork. Also a SIM tool is in there. A type C cable to get it charged up. The days of power bricks are over. This is your Phantom Black. This one is the green. And when you set them side by side, now you can start to appreciate how green this is or how black this other one is, I'm probably partial to black still, but as far as greens go, that's a nice little subtle one. Phantom Silver over here. So this is your lighter variant, which has a little bit of color shift to it. But that just gives you an idea of the differences there. So you're gonna get 12 gigs of RAM, no matter which version you get. You're either gonna get 256 gigs of storage or 512. You're gonna get a 4,400 milliamp hour battery. It's now starting at 1799 in the US and $2,269 in Canada. Yes, it is still a premium price tag, 
but it is obviously a premium phone. It's got the premium spec sheet and it happens to be one of the very few foldable devices to choose from. So the price tag kind of fits here. It's truly doing two things. You're getting a, a little tablet and a smartphone in one. This is the case that houses the pen and this just inserts like this. It's like a wallet style case and it allows you to store your pen. So that's what the form factor looks like if you wanna go this route. I'm more inclined towards keeping the case uh, slim. Uh, we're also of course gonna have a later case that we're gonna put out for that device. We have the version here for the Z Fold 2. This is about as thin as it can possibly get. We're also gonna have it available right now while you're watching this to pre-order for the Z Fold 3. So go check that out. Let's move on to the Z Flip 3. The Z Flip in general is not something that I spent a tremendous amount of time with, but it is an exciting form factor. This one actually caught Kirk's attention. He's like, I don't know, maybe I should be uh, flipping. I know famously my pal uh, Austin Evans loves this particular device. This is the portability advantage. This thing, when it's folded down, is tiny in the pocket. And I can tell right away, it's lighter weight. When you have it in the traditional phone form factor, it kind of feels like a regular smartphone that just so happens to fold. All right, so what is this color called, Will? Oh, it's called cream. It does actually look kind of appetizing almost. So I like the modern look to it on the back, modern shapes. When you hold it like this, like I said, it's, it really feels like a typical phone, maybe even lighter than some uh, other non-folding devices with a similar form factor. This is super comfy to hold up, take a phone call and then just quickly, you quickly fold it down. I gotta in improve my fold game. Oh, there we go. That's starting to, starting to come back to me now. There's something so satisfying about physically folding. And then when you go for the pocket test on this, it's tiny in the pocket. You hardly notice it's there compared to some of these monster smartphones we're carrying. So when it comes to portability, that's a true advantage to the flip over the fold. Now, when you're unfolded, obviously you have a little bit less room to work with. Well, quite a bit. And that's where this device comes in. That's why my preference is the larger one. A huge OLED display to watch content on. That's where this one shines, but on the go, this one here is gonna be tough to beat. 6.7 inches. Obviously the aspect ratio is a little bit different. So this one is taller, which helps make it comfortable to hold. So as far as the processor goes, we're still looking at top tier specifications, Snapdragon 888, whether you go flip or if you go fold. This is cream. We also have a greenish color. It's kind of more of an emerald. What are they calling this, Will? Just green, straight up green. Keep it simple and easy for myself. And then we have another uh, lavender-like color. This one is uh, quite flowery and vibrant. Obviously we have some differences here. Triple camera setup on the fold, double camera setup on the flip. So we have 12 megapixels times two. So on this one, we're lacking the optical zoom, but the whole thing is so slender, it kind of makes sense. Uh, as far as unlocking the device, it's similar on both. You place your thumb in this location over here. You have volume up above that. So to unlock it, it's a very sort of natural spot. And it's also the button that you're gonna use to power the device. Inside the package here, it's gonna be identical. Yeah, we've got our USB type C cable in there as well. If you head to samsung.com, you're gonna see the entire selection of color availability. So the Z Flip 3 is gonna start at $999. So it's gonna be a little bit more budget friendly as well. And in Canadian dollars, you're looking at 1259 to start. So you've got eight gigs of RAM here. You're either gonna get 128 gigs of storage or 256 gigs of storage. I almost forgot about this. Yes, front facing cameras. So on the fold, you have the exterior front facing camera, but then you also have the interior front facing camera with the sort of hole punch setup right there. And then on the uh, Z Flip, same idea. We have this tiny little hole punch right over here. This is 10 megapixels on both of the devices. So the cover camera on the exterior of the fold is gonna be 10 megapixels. Then the under display camera on the inside of the Z Fold 3, that's gonna be four megapixels. Oh, that's because this is one of the, one of the true under display situations. Wow, it kind of hides the front facing camera ever so slightly. So it's a little bit, uh, you know, less offensive than having a hole punch. That's pretty wild. So I got both the devices booted up, set up now, and this is what they're gonna look like in their uh, folded down, flipped down kind of uh, form factor. 
you can see, man, this thing is almost like half the size when it's folded down. And then what's funny is when you, I don't know how funny it is, but when you unfold this, they're almost the same form factor on the exterior. But then this one has the next level to it. Obviously you go like this. And this is the thing that I've missed. I can't wait to get back to and get the SIM card back in because this is just, it's a lot of fun. I mean, you just boot up some YouTube or something. If you spend any amount of time in like, like this experience of having all this real estate. And let me just show you what I'm talking about with the audio. Listen to this. This uh, viewing experience right here on the OLED. Like that, we're back. Mm -hmm. I mean, it really feels like you've got a tablet, a tablet that can also go in your pocket and also be a phone if you needed to. And it's really, it's truly unique in that sense. Look at this. I mean, I know, I realize you can do multitasking on other phones, but you just don't have the form factor to truly take advantage of it. If I flip back, fold back into this orientation, then uh, I have comments. So I can be watching up top, looking at comments down below. When it comes to content consumption, this thing truly comes into its own. Oh, I see how they're doing it. So the camera area is still the location where you're keeping, you know, your clock and your battery life and things like this. So tabs will open up underneath that portion. But if I go this way, that's where the front-facing camera no longer becomes a significant obstruction. Previously, you would have had a, a, a giant hole punch there, but now with this new tech, instead it just looks like sort of a little tiny grid pattern. But I think over time, you're basically, you're gonna stop even noticing that. And it's gonna be less of a distraction than the hole punch would be. So it's cool to see this technology implemented, especially in a device like this, which is so centered on content consumption and immersion. As far as fancy tricks go on this one, if I did the same task, open up YouTube, it's obviously a, a much different experience here because if I go scroll, I mean, I can still have a video and scroll here. It's, it's super tall. The video portion itself is quite small, but if I, it also depends on the aspect ratio of the video. Keep that in consideration. The This show is 16 by nine. Look at the expression right there. What a pause. That's quite a pause. Look at the expression. So the best part here is you get big smartphone experience, but you can do this. You can just bam and have a tiny smartphone in your pocket. Big smartphone experience, tiny smartphone in a pocket. This is small tablet experience and regular size smartphone in the pocket. The last time that I used this device as the daily driver, I noticed I ended up using this display a lot when I was out. And then when I had a little bit like a moment to relax or something, or I needed to get more comprehensive stuff done, then I'm going to this display here. And it was a huge improvement over the first generation when they went with the bigger exterior display, which truly made it function like a typical smartphone with a typical screen size without the need to unfold it. Okay, now another thing that struck me pretty much right away, especially when comparing this model to the previous generation is how much work Samsung has done on the hinge mechanism. So obviously uh, a big component, the most important component on a folding device is this hinge that makes it all possible. And of course we've seen the exploded views in the past of how many individual pieces and a uh, variety of mechanical aspects, how, how much of that goes into this hinge section. But I noticed right away when opening and closing this thing, it is absolutely a step above what was happening on the previous model. This one now can stop at any point. So it's a little bit less flimsy and feels more robust through its entirety of opening and closing. It reminds me of uh, one of these car doors that you would have on like a luxury vehicle that can stop at any point as opposed to continuing to swing to only like two or three points along the way. And I'm wondering if this new construction has anything to do with this enhanced IP rating as well that they've been able to uh, put into this device. And then also like, where does that play into the overall weight of the device? Cause somehow they were able to create a, a more satisfying and solid feeling hinge, but then they were also able to drop the weight ever so slightly. So that's kind of uh, a nice combination. It just feels to me like you're dealing with a device that is not first generation anymore. You're dealing with a device here where they have learned from the previous models and taken what they've learned and then applied it. And that's the nice thing about new form factors. There's so much room to grow and to figure things out as you have 
success along the way and i do expect samsung to continue to have success with this model because now you've also got the pen input to go with it which is something that a lot of people wanted and could be a compelling characteristic like a compelling feature for them to step up to it now as far as that front facing camera this uh, image here is kind of probably the best illustration you can get as to how it hides when you're looking at it straight on, but then it's kind of still there if you're really looking for it. The video overemphasizes the existence of it, but I would say at first glance here, it is an improvement and less distracting than the hole punch equivalent. Now, some of those hinge characteristics apply to the flip model as well, which you're looking at right here. And of course, this also has this secondary external display for some basic information, but you can see just how solid this hinge design is across the entire range of motion. Now, this device, I never spent a lot of time with the previous model. Maybe that will change with this model because there is something satisfying about this form factor as well and especially when it comes to single-handed usage it feels really light in my hand even more so than devices that don't fold at all it has this kind of slender feeling to it and because it's mostly tall and narrow one-handed text input is super easy to do so if you're one of these people that's always on the go this could be the foldable for you uh, I don't know for me it's just such a tough choice because I, I, I'm compelled by that large screen the ability to have a tablet in your pocket when you need to get even more stuff done but these do have their set of similarities when it comes to the way that you unlock them the, the big thumbprint on the side and of course the vibrant OLED that's the other uh, benefit here in order to get foldable you you're working with OLED to begin with and Samsung has figured that out a long time ago they have some of the most pleasing screens and as you've seen from this imagery here these things pop absolutely tons of color lots of contrast those deep blacks and so on and so that's another appealing component whether it's a foldable or not a foldable But just look how portable this thing is once it's folded up in clamshell mode. I can see this being appealing for somebody who is going out, wants to throw it in their purse or in their pocket. Uh, it's, uh, it's really, there's not a lot on the market that's quite like it. Now, as far as the camera options go, you still have uh, a lot of camera versatility. It might not be quite to the same extent as something like the S21 Ultra, but it's almost there. So you can see some of the uh, zoom capabilities here as the 2x of course you're going to have your portrait modes built into there uh, well it's the samsung camera app so whatever you're used to seeing you're going to find it here as well including uh this fine moment sentimental moment between kirk and kovu yes it's capable of capturing such things <laughs> There's also going to be a night mode built in there. This is a super early preliminary test, but you're going to find it to be comparable with the rest of the Galaxy lineup. So two very cool devices, but not the only stuff that Samsung has announced launch today. We also have the new watches as well, and I have the retail packaging here. So let's go ahead and do the unboxing. Galaxy Watch 4 Classic, Galaxy Watch 4. Woo! This classic is in black. So this is a 46 millimeter stainless steel case. You can see the sensors in the back. Military standard 810G, uh, GPS, 5 ATM, and Gorilla Glass DX. 20 millimeter band on it. This has a rugged kind of military look to it. And on my wrist, I, you know, I like the sizing. Might as well take advantage, get the bigger display on there. Plus you feel like you have something substantial that you're wearing. They do make it in different sizes. In fact, I have one with a silver white layout over here. And if you want a smaller size, but the classic looks still, ooh, how satisfying. Listen, very satisfying. I might get stuck doing that. Anyway, yeah, so if you want the classic look, but with a smaller scale, you can do that too, 42 millimeters. The Watch 4 is a slightly different style to it compared to the classic. So this one 
is gonna be lighter weight. This is the 40 millimeter. And then over here with the white band, I have the 44 and 40. The silver model you can see here, you have the black front, large display ratio, and then the silver bars on the side. That kind of looks cool. Am I crazy? Yes, so this is what your charger is gonna look like. The USB type A on one side, and then um, a magnetic connector, I presume. Let me just peel this off. Very simple and sleek. No pins, nothing like that. It just clips right on. Very nice. The watch band has this uh, quick release style over here. As far as the buttons go, you have a red indicator on the top button. They're tactile, so they have a nice springy click to them. Holy guacamole, what a hell of a video we got going on here. On this classic model with the white band, we have a leather band. The classic model here that I was saying was sort of military styling. This one has like a rubberized band. Similar, but slightly different from the Watch 4 over here. This is also rubberized, and so is this uh, white model right here. Might be partial to this one, but just if I had the black band on it. The Watch 4, I'm sure I can get that in black. Yeah, mm. We have green and pink gold as well. I don't have those ones here, but yeah, you have the difference between aluminum construction on the regular model and then the classic model. This is stainless steel, so that's why it feels uh, more robust if you if you kind of like that weighty sort of quality feel to it. Features an Exynos W920 chip, 1.5 gigs of RAM, and 16 gigs of internal storage. Oh baby, here are the sensors packed in. Accelerometer, barometer, gyro sensor, geomagnetic sensor, light sensor, Samsung bioactive sensor, optical heart rate sensor, electrical heart sensor, also known as an ECG, and bioelectrical impedance analysis, BIA. These are full out health devices these days, 2021. Yeah, the crown is uh, your input method, actually. Well, on this model, you simply move between your screens with this tactile click. It's quite satisfying if you haven't tried it before. Now, of course, you can also just touch the screen because it's a touch screen, so uh, if you don't have this bezel like on these other models, then that's how you're going to interact with it. You're right. It has like a digital, wow, and almost does it make a noise? A very slight noise. So this one has a haptic version of the physical click. I'm probably partial to the physical click myself, but if you felt like you were missing out, you're not you're gonna get the digital equivalent on the non-classic model. So uh, many options to choose from, which is great, especially in the watch category where everybody wants to personalize what they've got and use it in different ways. At this moment, if I had to pick between these four, I'd probably go for uh, this classic model, the larger classic model myself. Uh, this is just far too satisfying using this. All right, so I wanna talk a little bit more about the S Pen real quick, so I have this uh, Z Fold Pro model here. Now it is a different pen for the, the Fold, right? This, it says right on it, Fold Edition. Now I presume that has something to do with the nub. Oh, they've definitely reformulated the nub. I'm just looking at it right now. That is your Fold version of the nub. It's the same on this uh, Z Fold, the Pro model, as it is on just the Fold Edition. This is the smaller of the two that fits into the case. This is if you're getting real serious. And there's a little switch, a physical switch. It's also just physically bigger. Oh, what? Oh, cool. Look how you charge it up on the end, this little cap and type C charger. This one doesn't need to charge, very cool. All right, so a couple of different options for you there. Now let's actually try out the input. So if I open this up, let's see what goes on here. Oh, it's, oh, that's it. It's just working straight away. I can just, oh man, oh wow, that's a whole new, that's a whole new opportunity here. Makes a lot of sense in your brain. Like, it just makes sense at this range to be scrolling like this. I think the S Pen has actually come into its own on this device right here. The bigger the display, the more obvious the pen input becomes. You have this like two-handed thing. You can kind of uh, go up to the top portion of the pen and in a relaxing fashion, just scroll through 
documents. Uh, you can mark them up, obviously. It's just an extra uh, level of versatility there. So that's a nice addition. Both are capable of air command. However, the Pro model is capable of air actions. Listen, listen. Oh, so satisfying. I actually thought it was the pen on the screen for a second. No, no, no. No, no, no. It's the speaker, but it's very satisfying. It's like, kind of like how an electric car will have uh, some sort of sound feedback to help you realize you're doing something. This is the equivalent of such things. Wow. Last up item, the Galaxy Buds 2. Clear and rich sound with two-way speakers, active noise canceling, comfortable fit, and 5 to 20 hours of playtime. There we go. Very nice. The container in glossy white, LED light on the front, USB type C on the back to charge it up, and USB cable included in the package. So we crack it open. This model has this like dark gray on the inside. You can see the shape. Probably have interchangeable ear tips too, I'm guessing, inside the package. Look at that. So you can pick the right size that's suitable for you. There's your Type-C cable to charge it up. Now I mentioned I have different colors. So this is this graphite sound by AKG. So that partnership is still in place. And then I have some more over here. Now you might be deceived because you say, oh, they all look the same. Yeah, the cases are the same, but then you get a sense for the color when you crack them open. This must be olive. Come on, Will. Did I get that one? All right, that's olive. Graphite. We have white. The most obvious of the bunch. And then, ooh, lavender. Lavender. Wow, okay. Which one are you guys going for here? This is a tougher choice. A little olive. style aspect. We got two olive selectors. You went olive? Yeah, Mo and Kirk, you guys are merging into the same person and spending too much time together. I'm going to be boring and take graphite. And I'll save the lavender for Willie Do. Um, although, it's like that's a move. There's a move going on right here. You're Gerald Undone. 149 US and 189 Canadian active noise cancellation transparency mode 5 to 20 hours of battery life you do this charging orange light that never gets old that's always convenient oh there we go galaxy but sure you connect look how tiny those are Little pebble shape, no stem necessary. I hear the noise canceling kick on straight away. And a gaming mode. Minimize audio delay for vivid, synchronized game, gaming sound. So that's going to be like a low latency mode. Very cool. <laughs> you guys make noise, like say something. Check, 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 check. Check, 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 check. One, two, three, check, one, two, three. I'm trying to do like that lip reading challenge right now. I hear nothing. Oh, all right, not bad. Wow, what, what an unboxing extravaganza. Shout out to Samsung for, uh, for coming through. It's the buds, it's the watches, it's the new folding stuff. I haven't been this pumped to throw my SIM card into a new phone in a while. I've already been telling Willie, dude, when that new fold shows up, it's about to happen. I love stuff that's different. I've been doing this job for a little while. Just, just a couple of years, something like that. A lot of smartphones that come through here. It's another slab and another slab. And then uh, they show up with some folding stuff. And all of a sudden I'm like, all right, maybe that uh, science fiction future, maybe we're, maybe there's more to the story. Maybe we're going somewhere I don't know. Maybe I can still be surprised. And that's always a fun experience. You know, a little bit of magic. It's not old on me yet, I'll tell you that right now. I know when the first version came, I was like, whoa, wow, it's really folding. Exciting times. It doesn't have to be another slab. You, the, uh, imagination is alive in technology. You can do something different. You can flip, you can fold. It's up to you, it's cool. Let me put the SIM card in. Actually, before I do that, let me show you I got a giant box of accessories, so you can even make whatever you want out of this thing. Holy, look at this. Flip case with some style, and you can hook it onto something. 
Of course, we got the silicone covers. We got a cover with like a keychain style ring on it. Maybe you want to have this. Uh, so many to choose from. Oh, here's the uh, leather flip co cover. This seems to have like a little handle on it. Oh, and there's a magnet that pops it in right there when it's not in use. That's an executive look. I'm ready for the meeting or I'm ready for anything, actually. I'm ready for... Ready to cut, ready to make some deals. I show up, I'm like, I'm ready to make a deal. I brought my leather today. Let me just do the crazy case that Kirk was showing off. Check this look out. This look here is no joke. How about this for a look? Holy cow. Turning heads. That is a style aspect to it. They actually make that same case with, with neon green. And of course, if you want a later case as well for the Z Fold 3, we're doing it already. Available for pre-order right now, so go check that out if you want the thinnest thing possible. Of course, we also have it for the Z Fold 2 previous version if you want to check that out. So, man, what a time to be alive. Folding smartphones, it's real. They're here to stay. We're on the third version. Way to go, Samsung.